Hi, I'm Tim Colbego, CEO of Image IQ. I'm here with Amit Vasanji, our Chief Technology Officer, Chief Science Officer, and Founder. And he washes cars for us too while, while we're at it. Uh, we're doing a series of these mini webinars uh, to help people uh, work on some of their preclinical imaging work. We found that um, with a lot of the work that Amit you've done, that we run into people who don't quite get how to do the assays right, or they run into some mm -hmm. common challenges, or don't know how to analyze some of these things. So we thought, well, heck, we'll take advantage of your expertise, right. your experience, and uh, and share some of that stuff. And we're going to talk a little bit about image acquisition procedures, who's mm -hmm. using these kinds of mm -hmm. assays, and what kind of analysis can be done. Uh, today's topic is tube formation, as you can see on the yeah. screen, which is very cool. Mm -hmm. um, and so the way we're going to do this in most of these uh, webinars is we're kind of do this in a standard format. We're going to talk about who who uses the, the assay mm -hmm. that we're talking about what fields of research they, they use that in, what best practices you've seen, and what are some of the pitfalls in terms of mm -hmm. you know, sample prep or image acquisition. Is there anything uh, that people should consult from a literature perspective? And then hear a little bit about what we think about the current analysis. You know, and I'm sure we'll talk a lot about scales mm -hmm. from 1 to 5 or 1 to 10. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. right. And then what other options there are. Right. So, you're, so that's where we are. So let's get started. So I guess to start with, uh, tube formation. Relatively common assay. A lot of people doing tube formation. Yeah, quite a few. It's, it's a pretty simple assay. Um, essentially, if you take endothelial cells and you drop them into a three-dimensional construct, you get cells that uh, form tubes, you just like, and it, yeah, nope. yeah, you can just do it that way. <laughs> um, you have to put in other things like growth factors and things right. like that, but they'll form things like, uh, they'll form like um, connections and then eventually they'll form three-dimensional tubes, or, um, and hence the tube formation. Tube formation. Got it, got it, got it. Um, but no, anybody that's interested in um, stimulating um, vessel growth for wound healing or some, someone who is interested in um, uh, eliminating uh, vessel formation, like people that are looking at tumors and want to stop the, the vessel growth within a tumor to, to stop it from actually growing. Got it. There we so, so it kind of goes both ways, right. we're either looking at vessel growth or inhibiting it right. or whatever direction right. it is. Right. That's very cool. right. And what do people usually try to, you know, so when you do the, mm -hmm. when you do the mm -hmm. assay and you look at the, the matrix that's mm -hmm. that's formed, what are they trying to conclude? What, what kind of data do they look for? I mean, it, well, essentially they're trying to see how connected the structures are within the um, within the well. So okay. you, you have these all into in a number of wells and you add your drug, whatever your drug is, whether it's an inhibitor or a, st or a um, stimulator for angiogenesis, and then you'll see um, these connections happen. If you go over, if you wait too long, you'll get a whole bunch of stuff in there. But usually there's a set period of time where you're looking at these and saying, well, compared to a control or um, some kind of other positive control, you're seeing whether it's more or less in there. Um, and generally they're scoring them from, you know, like you mentioned, zero to five, and it's a pretty arbitrary scale. Right. So, you right. know, five for you might be different for five for another lab. So, right. or not, if you're having a yes. assay or right. Something right. like that. Yeah, that's right. cool. So, the assay itself, you know, what are some of the things, how does the assay done? Mm -hmm. I guess is what we wanted to share. And then, what are the things that you've seen that cause people to get in trouble? Right. Um, so, this is a, the schematic on here is a perfect example of how you would actually do this. You, you take matrix gel, which is a three dimensional construct, and and because these are, it's a three-dimensional process, you want these to have a little bit of depth so that they can grow into it. Okay. Um, and then you put in the growth factors and things like that. And so the, the cells you seed in there, and they'll eventually form these tubes. Um, Matrix gel is pretty expensive. Um, and so what most people try to do is create a very thin layer, because you're not trying to create these tubes. You're, you're just trying to see. Tubes right, right, you're just kind of trying, you're, not, you're looking for the connected network. So, um, and so they'll, they'll use really tiny wells. And one of the issues with actually doing the acquisition is if you use really, really tiny wells, you get a meniscus that forms. And when you acquire these images, right. you get a dark spot in the middle and really bright, uh, unanalyzable cells on the very edge. And so you know, the trade-off is that if you get that kind of image, you've got a limited amount of space to actually do the analysis. But then if you get, go to a larger well, you're going to spend a lot of money for the major gel. So, it. you know, we've, we've, what we've seen in the past is a 12-well plate usually works pretty well. You get enough of a flat surface that you can make, uh, do it, perform a good analysis. What are the other? Like if somebody went to a small well, is that um, you, you, They can go down to 60, 64. Um, some oh, people wow. do, okay. yeah, 384. Yeah, <laughs> it's just pretty. But, you know, at that point, you're not really looking at things that are analyzable by, right. by, by even by a person. So. Right, got it, got it. So is there a standard kind of way that this is done, or does everybody kind of tweak it to meet their own needs? Or um, like it's, it's pretty standard. If you go through any of the literature searches and you did a, a search on PubMed for tube formation, you'll find a, a pretty common sort of set of um, parameters that people use um, in terms of the concentration of metro gel and the, the type of well plates that they use. Um, in terms of the acquisition, um, you can actually do a, a multiple uh, types. You can do a single image within the well. 
um, or you can do a raster scan across the entire wall. Um, okay. you know, for image analysis, you would probably want to do a raster scan so you get a high resolution image, so you're stitching together a mosaic of the entire wall. Got it. And that's useful if you did a larger wall like a 12 wall. Right. So. And you're doing these with phase contrast Correct. images, right? Yeah. Um, so this is an example on the screen of a phase contrast image, and you can actually see pretty clearly the meniscus in this image. So that's the, the, yes, uh, yeah, the is halo. The, is the inside, I see the halo, yeah. what's the, the, the inside circle? It's just their diffraction pattern that you're getting from the phase contrast. So okay. the, the center part is the deepest part of the well where you see a dark spot and then the edge you'll see a meniscus so Got it. Got it. Um, you know whatever you're using you have to either if you're using your own you know observation you have to sort of visualize that disappearing right. or and then the, if you're using an algorithm it has to account for that right. so. but an algorithm can correct for it if you, if you correct. Have like a, a blank or a something correct like that. right okay. um, one of the other ways that you can avoid the issues that you see with phase contrast is maybe try fluorescence so um, you can use dyes that stick to membranes. Um, there's a couple of different variations, like they're called dye eye stains, and they stick to any sort of membrane, especially endothelial cells. So um, if you do that, you get a fluorescence image and you get rid of any of this I issue with the bright field imaging. Got so, it. Got it. Um, and it's much easier to analyze. So. Okay, so, so fluorescence is an option, but most people don't do that? No, most people do face contrast. It's the cheapest way to do it and sure. the fastest way to do sure. it. So. Sure, sure, sure. What other things come up? Like, I mean, are air bubbles an issue? I know we get a um, lot of air bubble. We do a lot of air bubble removal. <laughs> Right. Yeah, it can be. Um, generally, it's not a big deal if you use a fairly large well, but um, usually the air bubble isn't in the field of view, but it's away, it's like on top of your um, your well, and so, but it affects the imaging because you get a shadow. Got it. Um, and so you get multiple one of these dark spots everywhere, and so it affects the imaging and image analysis. Got so. it. Got it. So in terms of analyzing these things, so you, you, do, your, you do your analysis, whether you've got the, you, or you do your, your your essay, right. and whether you got little well, little wells or big wells, right? Right, right? And now you got to go from this connected network, and mm -hmm. we see some examples here, to something to to start supporting your data, right? You got to right. get data out of this, right? What, and and I guess that's kind of what the slide looks like. It's, yeah. it's kind of a zero to five. Yeah. It's kind of a standard yeah. thing, right? And you can see how someone can misinterpret some of those. Like so, a zero is basically unconnected network, so you're not getting any sort of branching and node formation between the endothelial cells. And what you're the, so the connections are formed by these endothelial cells that are stretching, and then the nodes are a bunch of clumps of these endothelial cells that are connected together. So, um, so in five, you see a really large number of those connected endothelial cells. But the problem is in five, you've got more connections or more cells that are grouping together, but the network basically shrank because you've, you, you're you coalescing at right. these nodes. Well, and things are um, thicker. Right, and right. It, it, and, you know, there's a, there's a subtlety between four, five, and three that you may not necessarily pick up. And so that's that's a big difference when you're using a scale from zero to five, right? Right, right. Um, well, so that's manual-based right. analysis. And then if you, if you go to, a, like, off-the-shelf software analysis, you know, you're kind of in a, you're in a slightly different, you know, somebody grabs ImageJ or has Image Pro right. or picks up one of these products, right. you know, what, what are the, some of the challenges there? Um, you know, it, it's, it's trying to account for the, the different types of shadowing and things that you get in an image is kind of tricky when you use off-the-shelf software. So you may not be able, if you don't know how to go way around the tools and the filters, you may not be able to get rid of that. And that's going to affect how you do your analysis. And what ends up happening is, you can account for those, and then so everyone's opening an image and adjusting things on a image by image basis. Now your results aren't consistent. Aren't consistent, right? Well, we get that a lot, right? We I know we do a little bit of work. Well, we, you, and your team do a little bit of work where you know people. Well, I got it to work for five images, but now right. I have five hundred images, right. and I can't ever get it to work for right. the whole five hundred. Right, that, right. That's part of the challenge, right. Right? and it's time consuming to do it on all five hundred like that. So right. right. Yeah. For sure. For sure, yeah, 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 that could take a little bit of right. that could take a little bit of time. So right. that's for sure. Well, so one of the things we wanted to talk about here a little bit, and it's kind of the commercial mm -hmm. part of this thing, is kind of the concept we've put together with ImageQuantified.com, mm -hmm. is that you know we created this thing to really try to help people remove some of those challenges. You don't want to get into human observer stuff because, mm -hmm. like we said, I mean, we didn't even talk about how tired people get and all right. that, all that right. stuff. That's right. crazy. But then, you know, you try to do the software yourself and things get a little weird, so we put this uh, image quantified together. You know, maybe you could talk a little bit about the IQ bot we built for tube formation assays. Pretty good. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, it was one of our first ones, actually. Right? Yeah, yeah, and it was actually in existence for probably about 10 years. We've been, it's been published multiple times, and um, we've sort of refined it over the years. So this IQ bot is, is 
about 10 years of history it's, it's, behind it. This is our oldest IP yes, right. right. Uh, and if, if anybody's watched our video, it's not one of the little Yes, IP. Right, right, right. Um, But, you know, from that, what kind of what kind of data does the IQ bot give you? Because, like we said, mm -hmm. zero to five was neat, right. but it doesn't tell you the whole story. Yeah, so. it's, there's a wealth of information that you can get now, and they're all listed on the screen here. But because you can now analyze every single um, connection point and how thick that connection point is, and then all of the branching, all of the network analysis that you can get out of it. So um, the total area, um, the total number of nodes that you get, the total number of node-to-node, um, -node, uh, or the average node-to-node -node distance, the number of enclosed tubes or, or, or tubules that you get, um, all of those in that information can be spit out on the, of the IQ bots. So. so here where it says three, four, or five right. plus branch mm -hmm. nodes, that's where more than three, so three branch nodes would be three cells coming right. to a point. Right, right, right. right. And so it, it, it figures out from on the entire network how many of these nodes, that if it, it first analyzes where all the nodes are, and then it finds how many of these branches are coming out of each node and counts them. Um, all automated. There's nothing that you have to do except to present it with an image. Um, and it also does the thickness of the nodes, which is important because you saw in the earlier image, a five actually has a number of cells that are um, connected together in one single node. So it gives you the thickness of that node. Got it. So. Got it. Well, I know when we did some of this validation mm -hmm. in the IQ bot space, it takes time to yep. go through and find all the nodes, draw the nodes, right. and I know that, you know, um, part of the challenge mm -hmm. here is, well, okay, the IQ bot concept we have is it's fast, mm -hmm. right? Um, but, you know, how do you, what are some of the ways you've seen people effectively present this, right, and show show the images and, you know, what comes back from the IQ bots? We talk about these overlay images a lot. Right. Now, how does that work and, and what, what do people use those for and how do, how do you show, you know, we got red dots and blue, green, mm -hmm. right. rainbow. Right. Um, so the the idea is that you, you present the IQ, the image to the IQ bot and it runs and gives you a whole bunch of data, but you don't necessarily know that that data is accurate or not. So what we do is also give you an output image that consists of a node map, which is all of these, um, this image on the left that has a bunch of uh, dots in it, which is all of the node um, connective, uh, connections. Um, and then also a, um, a branching map that you see on the far right, which is pseudocolor based on how thick each of the pixels are within that um, branch. Got so, it. Um, and so you can easily see now whether the algorithm did well or, or failed. Right. And, and you know, it, again, it generally does pretty well. So um, you know, but it's, it's another way to confirm it, and you, you can also use it for publications. Right. So. right. Yeah, you can right. take them and cut and paste them. But it's, it's kind of the garbage in, garbage out right. thing, like we talked earlier. Regardless of whether you're using an IQ bot or your own software, right. or even people, right. you know, if you don't get your imaging mm -hmm. quite right, it, get, it gets a little bit weird. So, right. right? That I mean, I think that's kind of the thing. So. Um, I think that's kind of what we've got. Mm -hmm. um, you know, thanks everybody for watching. Hopefully, it was helpful for you to understand a little bit about the tube formation. As mm -hmm. thanks for sharing. Sure. Um, you know, we we uh, we love doing this stuff. We're imaging folks. That's what we do. We we think this is is, is great stuff. Uh, if you think the image quantify thing makes sense, give it a try. Uh, I think you can register for free. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you get like uh, free credits, right. so you can try a few images mm -hmm. in the beginning, which is kind of neat. And um, you know, if you have any other questions, give us a ring or drop us an email. We'd be happy to happy to help out. Right, and there's variations of, of how people do these um, nowadays. So, like, if you, for example, had yeah. a transfected cell um, line on top of your um, your endothelial cell network, you and you want to analyze how much of the network is covered by your transfected oh, right. cells. We've done that in the past too. So. Right, so you wouldn't be able to use the current IQ, right, but right, you could augment right. it. And oh, that's right. that's a good idea. Well, yeah. So from that perspective, give us a call. Yep. And we can we can do that relatively quickly mm -hmm. too. So excellent. Thanks very much. I'm hit. Thanks for joining sure. us. Cool.